Hello, YouTubers, and welcome to yet another Throwback Thursday with me, Peter, the Master of Hoppets, here on the Master of Hoppets, a series where we take a look into classic beers and historic beers and all this stuff. You guys know the series by now. It's been really fun revisiting old stuff. Today, we're going to Britain, revisiting some classic British bitter that I haven't had in years. I was actually shopping for making kimchi myself, and this was in the shelves, on the shelves of the supermarket, and I was like, wow, I haven't had this in probably six or seven years. So this is none other than Shepherd Neem's Spitfire Ale in the bottle. If you follow me back in the day, you can find a review of me and Jakob the Lord of Malt reviewing Spitfire, but from cans, and there's a plane going by in the back, uh, which was actually just a sound effect and us being silly. <laughs> but I thought this could be fun to revisit. The only thing I don't like is this clear bottle because I can kind of already smell skunkiness. Uh, here. It's a 4.5%, they call it amber ale. Online it's categorized as a British bitter, but they often vary a lot in color. Uh, so it's a bitter on 4.5%, but towards the amber color made with Kentish hops and finest quality malt and well water. And I believe Shepherd Neem is Britain's oldest brewery. So I can't remember the last time I had a Shepherd Neem beer at all. It's been a long time, so let's go. Here we go, breaking out the Fuller's Nonic Pint glass that I haven't used in ages. <laughs> Perfect for this kind of beer. I mean, it'd be better to sit with a snifter to smell, but if you go to a pub in the UK, this is how you'd get it, you know? So, it looks nice. It's a nice golden amber color, <laughs> copper. Head on there, it's like off-white. I'll show the aroma on Shepherd Neem Spitfire for the first time in a long time. Yeah, so it's slightly skunked, uh, but it's not too much, I think. And this is also a fairly fresh bottle. Uh, this was bottled only four months ago, so that's pretty good for like supermarket beer. And also, again, it's a bitter, so it's not, well, it is kind of, it can be a bit hoppy, but usually it's not like, you know, IPA is a fade like that. But very toffee and uh, biscuity and bready, slightly buttery. But not like, maybe not even di diacetyly buttery, just like a caramel butterscotch thing. And diacetyl is very easy to pinpoint. And I think you get that more on cask variants of a lot of these British beers. And a lot of them, it's, you know, it's acceptable. I'm not really getting it here. It's almost like just like a toasted buttered bread or something. It smells very classic. The more I'm smelling it, the more I'm getting past the slight skunkiness from the hops. And the, the Kentish hop that is there, it just gives like this grassy hedgerow, uh, nettly aroma. It's probably something like EKG, East Kent Goldings, or uh, maybe Fuggles, or something like that. But it's like that spicy, marmalady, orange marmalady hop character. Smells very classic. And this is perfect temperature, too. It's not like frosty, ice cold. It's chilled, but not ice cold. Let's try, guys. Cheers, and happy Throwback Thursday. That takes me back. <laughs> wow. Nostalgia. Well, down nostalgia lane. I think I like this more than I actually thought I would. I thought I'd be like, meh, this is a very nice, easy drinking beer. It is. I think I can see myself also getting into bitters again. <laughs> it is super sessionable, easy going. The only things that are pulling it down a bit is like it's got a little bit of a metallic twang and the skunkiness is not there on the aroma, but I think it's because it's more malt century centric on the palate. It's also quite carbonated for like a classic English beer, but again, it's bottled. It's quite different if you have this from cask where it's live beer and most of these breweries do. I love how it says a Kentish ale with substance and character, the Bottle of Britain. It's not Battle of Britain because this was made as trip or as a like celebration a remembrance thing of the Battle of Britain. Shepherd Neem does like three different variants of Spitfire now, the Amber, then they do a Golden version, Golden Ale, and they also do a Spitfire Lager, just so you guys know. But we only get the Amber in Denmark. Do you know what? It's blazing hot out right now. I'm just about to go meet up with some friends after this. This is actually very nice. This is something I would love sitting out within the sun instead of only IPAs to switch things up. I don't think this is the best bitter you can get by the stretch of the imagination, but it's nice. I like this caramelly, uh, toffee, burnt toast, uh, orange marmalade-y, hedgerow, nestle, slightly spicy and peppery flavor on it. Uh, it's good. The big drawback is the metallic notes. 
when I rated this back in the day, I gave it a 55, which is incredibly low. But you have to bear in mind that when I started the channel years ago, I was looking at the grading scales as how you grade in Denmark. And the lowest passing grade in Denmark, if you look at a 100 scale, would be like, mm, this is like a 40, something like that, maybe even a 30. We only have two failing grades in this country in school. So, and I, I don't know, I, I just had a weird idea about the system uh, and the whole 100 scale. And now it's more closely related to, you know, the likes of Beer Advocate and stuff like this. Um, where I'd say like, or if we just link, link it to like Untapped, where like a 3.5 is a good beer, which is like around 85. And then you go up from there and down from there. Then I think there's a good swing, swing in point. Uh, but yeah, this is a nice beer. It's never going to be anything mind-blowing for anyone. It's just like a nice, easy-going, classic British beer. And it, like, it's just enjoyable. I think you can definitely get better examples of the style, as I said, and there's definitely stuff I'd pick over this. Uh, but as it is right now, I'm really enjoying it. So, yeah, really watch for the Shepherd named Spitfire. I haven't had it in years. <laughs> it was fun to revisit. I'd go straight 80, 82 maybe. This would be like a 325, I think, on Untapped. I think it's a decent beer. It's enjoyable and it's refreshing, but it's nothing crazy. And it never will be, but that's not what it's made for. But you can get British beers with a bit more character. I'd like to have a little bit more. It has like that marmalade thing, which could be a combination of esters and hops. But I'd like a bit more of that to offer a bit more complexity. Even though it has a decent complexity for only a 4.5% beer, which is a lot of these, you know, classic British beers. They're very low in strength, which is actually quite nice. So you can session them. But uh, this was great. This was fun. Uh, some of you guys requested to do Rochefort. That will come soon, but it will have to be a day when I'm together with Brett or someone, because I want to do all three variants. Uh, the 6, 8, and 10. I think that's how it is. It'd be fun, I think, to revisit all three at once, because I haven't had those in years either. So that will come eventually, because it was requested. But if you have any requests for Throwback Thursday, guys, feel free to let me know, and I'll see if I can find the given beer. But this was fun. So if you guys had a chance to try it, Shepard Name, Spitfire, Amber Ale, let me know what you thought of it. As always, please comment, subscribe, check out the Facebook fan page, and Twitter, and Instagram. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I'm going to say cheers and see you guys in another Throwback Thursday. And also, remember to ring the bell for more notifications about videos on the channel. Cheers.